Hello everyone. So we are done with the normal anatomy of brain stem. Now coming to the applied anatomy part. Have you ever heard of stroke? It is the most common etiology of brain injury which results in various clinical syndromes. We will see them one by one. Arterial supply of brain stem has direct association with these syndromes. Any blockage to the vessel causes ischemia to the particular area of brain which it supplies and it leads on to various problems. So you have to know the arterial supply very well. Uh, showing the lower part of circle of villus, we will soon brush up the arterial supply of brain stem. The midbrain is supplied by the basilar artery the posterior communicating artery and the anterior cho choroidal artery. Pons is supplied by pontine branches of the basilar artery, the superior cerebellar artery and the posterior cerebral artery. Medulla oblongata is supplied by two vertebral arteries, the anterior spinal artery and the posterior spinal artery, the anterior uh, inferior cerebellar artery and the posterior inferior cerebellar artery. This artery also supplies the pons. Medullary syndromes occur due to brainstem stroke uh, in which an area in medulla getting damaged due to ischemia caused by re uh, reduction in blood supply. For example, an area over the 12th nerve gets injured, uh, then the nerve supply will be compromised. It leads to various signs and symptoms related to the 12th nerve which is the hypoglossal nerve. Uh, similarly, if the area has tracts and uh, other physiological centers, their function will also be affected. There are two syndromes related to medulla, which are the medial medullary syndrome or the digerine syndrome and the lateral medullary syndrome or the Wallenberg syndrome. This is the vasculature of medulla. So, arterial supply of medulla is by two vertebral arteries, the anterior and posterior spinal arteries, basilar artery and the anterior and posterior inferior cerebellar arteries. First syndrome is the medial medullary syndrome or the Tegerin syndrome. These are the areas affected in this syndrome. The hypoglossal nucleus, the medial lemniscus and the pyramids. So, the, uh, it is mainly due to the uh, anterior spinal uh, branch of the vertebral artery which is getting affected. The pyramids uh, lesion will lead on to the uh, sign or symptoms which is the contralateral hemiplegia of the body and the hypoglossal nerve injury will lead on to ipsilateral paralysis of half of tongue and the medial lemniscus uh, leads to contralateral loss of position and vibration sense of the body this is the uh, Wallenberg syndrome or, uh, or the lateral medullary syndrome it is also called the pica syndrome because of the arterial supply is by the posterior inferior cerebellar artery. So here a wedge shaped area is affected in the lateral part of medulla. The areas affected are the spinothalamic tract, the uh, trigeminal nerve tract, the nucleus ambiguous, the inferior cerebellar peduncle, the nucleus tractus solitarius and the inferior vestibular nerve. These are the areas mainly affected in the lateral medullary syndrome. This area shows the mid olivary level medulla. So the symptoms will be contralateral loss of pain and temperature, contralateral loss of pain and temperature over the body uh, that is due to the spinothalamic tract injury and then the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve involvement leads to ipsilateral loss of pain and temperature in the face. Nucleus ambiguous uh, injury will result uh, in ipsilateral paralysis of muscles of palate, pharynx and larynx. Inferior cerebellar peduncle, uh, uh, the lesion causes ipsilateral ataxia and the cerebellum is also involved in the syndrome. Coming to the pontine syndromes, it is caused due to stroke that is the arterial occlusion. Um, the nerve involvement will be 5, 6, 7 and 8 showing the corresponding signs and symptoms. So the two syndromes of uh, Pons are medial pontine syndrome it, uh, which is also called as the millard gubler syndrome and the lateral pontine syndrome. Showing the vasculature of Pons, the blood supply is by basilar artery that is the pontine branches of basilar artery and the an anterior inferior cerebellar artery. 
Millard Kopler syndrome or or uh, the medial pontine syndrome the nerves involved are cranial nerve 6 and 7 which is the abducens nucleus and the facial nerve nucleus these two are directly involved facial nerve is directly involved and then uh, it leads to the symptoms such as ipsilateral medial squint and uh, ipsilateral facial palsy the pyramidal tract involvement uh, leads to cortico uh, that is the contralateral hemiplegia of the body the lateral pontine syndrome the uh, artery affected here is the anterior inferior cerebellar artery the facial nucleus is directly involved uh, which is which is causing the symptom ipsilateral facial palsy and there will be loss of corneal reflex also the cochlear nucleus the vestibular nucleus and the spinothalamic tract all are getting injured in this syndrome and the involvement of uh, spinothalamic tract leads on to contralateral loss of pain and temperature in the body the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve uh, injury will lead uh, will lead to ipsilateral uh, pain and temperature loss in the face coming to the midbrain syndromes it occurs due to trauma or ischemic injury due to stroke the lesion of brain involves cranial nerves 3 and 4 which are the ocular motor and the trochlear nerve three syndromes are associated with the midbrain which is the weber syndrome the benedict syndrome and the perrinaud syndrome so these are the areas affected in all these three syndromes in weber syndrome benedict syndrome and the perrinaud syndrome showing the midbrain vasculature the blood supply of midbrain is by basilar artery branches the posterior communicating artery and the anterior uh, anterior choroidal arteries weber syndrome occurs due to the occlusion of posterior cerebral artery the oculomotor nerve is directly affected causing the lateral squint which is on the same side ipsilateral and the involvement of crest cerebri which consists of the corticospinal tract uh, results in contralateral hemiplegia of the body in benedict syndrome the areas affected are the tegmentum and the paramedian area here so the oculomotor nerve uh, injury will lead to lateral squint on the same side red nucleus involvement leads to contralateral tremors and involuntary movements as we all know the red nucleus is responsible for motor coordination so its lesion will lead to involuntary move- movements and tremors trigeminal nuclei and the spinal laminsky injury will lead to contralateral loss of pain and temperature in the face and the medial laminsky injury will lead to contralateral loss of vibration and position sense now the last syndrome which is the perrinaud syndrome damage is due uh, is to the superior colliculus uh, which may occur due to the compression by pineal gland tumor it also occurs in infants and they uh, there will be inability to move the eyeball up uh, up and down but most commonly only the upward gaze is lost and all the other eye movements are intact so that is all about clinical syndromes Thank you so much for your patience. Uh, do register yourself in Agam at agam dot org dot in, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more such free videos. We will see you with another new topic. Happy learning.